How about you? I'm Hank. Welcome to Hamiltonville Farm. Today we got a real cool video. We're going to actually go over the process of how to tie a tractor down to a trailer. So we're going to load up the Coyote CK4010 onto Brandel's tra uh, trailer and then we're going to talk about the tra uh, the strap down technique or I'm sorry, the tie down technique or uh, chain down. Chain down. Yeah. Chain down let's technique. not strap it down. Let's chain it down. Yeah, let's chain it down. So because this is a this is a really, uh, not a touchy subject per se. No, I'd say it's touchy. It, I think it's touchy. You think it's touchy would be yeah, the good word? I because there's so. a lot of there's a lot of rules that go yeah, into it. Yeah. And a lot of things to consider about the weight load and the weight distribution. Yeah. So we'll get into all that right after this. Now Brandel's actually got a D ring. That now did you did you put that on there yourself or did it come with it? Yeah, so I'm pretty. I'm a, I, I try to be a stickler for trying to tie stuff down. So a lot of people tie stuff through their chains or straps or however they do it to the axle. There's not a lot of good space in the axle or even just through mm -hmm. the loader yeah, here yeah. itself. Um, I didn't like any of those options. A lot of people just hook a uh, do their hook right here. Yeah. I didn't like any of those options, so I went ahead and made a plate with a with a big twenty thousand pound D ring. Gotcha. To the front, and it's bolted. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. It's threaded to a plate here, and I've actually got nuts on the back of it. Yeah. Okay. So it should be pretty stable. All hopefully. Right. Good. All right. You can see here, Hank, how that I've got the hook ran through and then doubled back around in the stake pocket. So that way it, it kind of helps minimize the possibility of the hook falling out or if it does come loose, at least it's it's wrapped back around the stake pocket, kind of yeah, wrapped back sure. around itself. I guess there may be a good, like, preferred over or under way. Uh, maybe that's something that you guys can leave in the comments. Because um, I know that there probably is. I just, I just don't know which way that is. So I've got the front hooked up and kind of tight, just hand tight more or less. Now what we've done is we've we've done one chain in the back. I've got some D-rings I've welded up on the draw bar as well for another good tie down. I know a lot of guys do the will have just a D-ring that they've got bolted into their draw bar. So this brings the kind of I guess center of gravity closer to the tractor. So it's a little bit less force on the draw bar. But the, the one chain that I've got set up here, whenever I get the front, kind of hand tight. Then I'll go ahead and put a little bit of pressure on the front with the back, and then go up to the front and do the final tightening on the front. Now that we've got this tractor on this trailer, let's go over some of the particulars about how we did it and some of the things to consider when you're putting your tractor on a trailer, because this is a very, it's a very dangerous thing if you do it wrong, not only to yourself, but to possibly others. If this thing comes off while you're driving down the road, uh, and it could break a lot of equipment, your trailer, your tractor, uh, your, the truck that you're towing it with. So let's, let's talk about some of the things 
that you have to consider. One thing you need to consider right off the bat is your, your federal and state laws. Uh, so check your DOT websites. I'll put a link to the, the federal uh, DOT website below in the description box, but make sure you understand that the load capacities require different things. So we were talking about chains versus straps a while ago. So what do you think about, what's your thought process when you're using chains and the grades and things like that? Yeah. So everything that we've used, well not everything, but the, the main structural tie downs that we've used here are grade 70 transport chains. So uh, these gold chains are what you're going to see on all the highway trucks. Uh, they're going to be pretty much the strongest transport grade chain. The, the rules are that all of your chains have to be half the total weight. Right. So this tractor, it's the tractor is 2,700 pounds, the loader is 900 pounds. Plus so your fuel tires. Plus the yeah, yeah. rolling tires and all that, yeah. any implements and stuff. So we're going to be well within, yeah. the, this grade 70 is going to be, I think roughly 7,000, 7,500 pounds per chain. Right. So we've got three grade 70 chains on this trailer or on the, the tractor. So I think that we're well within our weight rating. Yeah, so basically basically what, what it is, if you've got 10,000 pounds worth of equipment, uh, you can use 5,000 pounds worth of chains, yeah, right? Exactly. Uh, per chain. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so 50% of the weight limit load. Uh, so that's not, and if you don't know what your trailer or your axles can take on your trailer, there's an information plate on the frame of the trailer, uh, usually up by the tongue uh, area near the hitch. If you can look on that, it'll tell you what your trailer is rated for. So make sure you don't exceed the weight limit for your trailer. All right, so once we talked about the, the weight capacity of the chains itself, uh, talk about some of the considerations as far as where you're tying it down and how you're tying it down. So typically what uh, the, the most recommended method is going to be in the corners right. and to do some, some sort of X or some sort of a, like a diagonal opposite. Opposing point. forces. Yeah, yeah, opposing forces. Yeah. So, I, didn't go, I didn't do very well in math, but opposing forces, I, you know, I did study yeah. war as a retired military yeah. guy. There you go, right? <laughs> so, so we've got sort of a triangulation. We've got our front chain are pointing toward the front of the trailer and our rear chains are pointing to the rear of the trailer so we should have some pretty good opposing forces there and something else the uh, the dot requires four contact points and you can satisfy that with uh and what they mean by four contact points is that chain or that tie down apparatus there you uh, go uh -huh. i like it that tie down apparatus has to touch the track the cargo in four places, this being the tractor. And so that's what they mean by the four contact points. And as you pull against each other, uh, then that creates a, a tension that allows the more stability in the cargo or the tractor that you're hauling. But you also can strap down or chain down or tie down your implements. So what, do you, what did you do there? So the rules are a little fuzzier there, I suppose. So what I've done is I've used actually some come along. So I've got a couple I think they're ton and a half okay. come alongs. So 3,000 pound come alongs. They they are marked for their rated weights. So that's that's always good. And basically, I've just done sort of a U shape around the front end loader. And again, that makes our opposing force. So mm -hmm. it's the on the front we're pulling it toward the back. Right. And then on our rear we're kind of pulling toward the back as well. Yeah. So, but it it makes that X or the opposing force. So they, they should be pretty secure. A lot of people, even with this, will use ratchet straps, which even though I'm not a huge fan of ratchet straps, that can be an okay thing because everything's still attached and you've got your main tie downs right. here. It, it, it's more sort of a, I guess, security blanket yeah. as it yeah. were. So, but anything that you can do to secure the load, you can see how I've got my, my bucket inside my grapple it's just everything is more secure the a lot of people will go through the loader tube that would be a good securement for the loader itself but i don't think that that's necessarily a good securement for the total tractor yeah itself, no since, i agree since with that. it is a, a I agree separate with that. attachment and, and uh the metal is not as beefy as if you were going to like the frame or yeah. the axle or something like that and so those are some considerations but now that you've got the tractor onto the trailer and you've got it secured and tied down 
let's talk about how we got to that point. You're going to want a flat surface to load this cargo onto your trailer. So if you're one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to point your truck downhill. All right. <laughs> so don't that's bad juju. You know what I mean? So make sure you find a flat level spot to load up. And what we've done is we've actually added chocks to the trailer tires. And so we put one in the front and one in the back as well. And you want it as uh, you want as stable as possible when you're loading your tractor because we've all seen videos or we've all seen pictures where the track the tractor has come off the trailer yeah. due to the trailer or the truck you know shifting or the angle is not right and you know i didn't i didn't do good in physics at all but i know the center of gravity you yeah. know once you once you exceed the center of gravity uh then bad, then bad things happen yeah absolutely know? So, and then yeah. I take it even further than that too whenever I load my stuff yeah is I always make sure that my parking brake is set on my truck and I actually I put it in four-wheel drive I don't know if that helps or not <laughs> but I figure if, yeah. the, if the rear sure. axle comes up I've sure. got the front axle to hopefully hold me. yeah so yeah no just, it makes sense that's logical thing, that's yeah, very logical so. um, but the, as we said in the intro of the video there is this is a touchy subject okay and so whatever you do, make sure you're legal and safe, or yeah. really make sure you're safe and legal yeah. uh, because you don't want to hurt yourself, you don't want to hurt others. So tie down all, you know, there's no such thing as overkill, nope. I guess. So you can, uh, there's a picture floating around. If I can find it, I'll stick it in this video where the trailer and the yeah. tractor are, are literally vertical. Uh, so that, whoever tied that trailer down yeah. or that tractor down to that trailer, well, they've done an excellent job. So That's too bad it came off the truck. D.O.T. hero, yeah. <laughs> he, he, yeah, he, he didn't do a real good job on the hitch ball, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he forgot the little switch. Heck, heck yeah. of a job on the, on the trailer. <laughs> so, but listen, th hopefully we gave you some things to consider or things to think about when you're loading up your tractor onto your trailer. One thing I will say is if you're not comfortable doing it yourself, find somebody to help you with it. Or uh, if, you're, if you're having to transport the tractor back to the service department, go ahead and pay somebody to, to transport it for you if your warranty doesn't cover it or if your dealership's not going to cover that transport fee, especially if you're not comfortable doing that or if your vehicle's not rated to, you know, if you got a half-ton truck versus a three-quarter truck, th three-quarter ton truck, depending on the size of the tractor, uh, you know. Uh, but so if you got some of these plastic-made tractors like some of these John Deere's <coughs> that are in it, <laughs> I'm totally kidding, I'm totally kidding. But if you have some of these tractors that are, you know, the one series or the, the subcompacts and stuff like that, then, you know, you might be able to get away with a half ton. But three quarter ton trucks yeah. for the bigger tractors, the equivalent trailers with brakes on the trailer, yeah. electric brakes Absolutely. on the trailer, uh, all that stuff has to be in good mechanical condition, working condition. Make sure your floorboards, if they're made of wood, are not rotting. Uh, this, oh, there's a lot of things to consider when you're doing that, but you have to consider it because if you don't, then you can end up hurting yourself or others, and that's something you don't want to have to deal with uh, if, if you have an accident like that. Um, inclement weather, you know, if you can delay the transport uh, when the weather's a lot nicer or, you know, the roads aren't slick and things like that, then, then you know, think about, hey, maybe I'll go tomorrow when the roads aren't as slick, if you can do so, if the situation warrants it. But anyway, hey, listen. Leave us some comments below about what some ideas you have, or if we miss some stuff, because there's a lot. There's a lot to cover, oh, yeah. and what we want to do is this is not an end-all, be-all by any stretch of the imagination. This is more of a thought-provoking type video. Uh, so if you have some more ideas or you have some more thoughts that would be helpful for our viewers, please leave those in the comments because we want everybody to 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 get as much out of this as possible. And a lot of it has to do with the comments that you leave below. So, but anyway, Brandon, thanks a lot for helping us do this video. Yeah. Uh, you've seen him in the last couple of videos, and uh, we're just excited that he is uh, our neighbor, and uh, he's probably already looking for a place to move. <laughs> <laughs> Fun stuff. Yeah. I get to play with my tractor. That's, ex that's exactly right. So, hey, we appreciate you guys watching. As always, there's going to be this little barn pop up over here. If you click on that, that'll take you to our subscribe page. We'd love for you to uh, subscribe and kind of join our community. That would be a, we, we'd, we'd feel honored that you would do that. So, thanks a lot for watching. We appreciate it. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one. You guys take care.